This is the movie that's changing Bruce Dern's image. It's Middle Age Crazy. Dern plays a 40-year-old guy who suddenly changes his lifestyle. He leaves his wife, Anne Margaret, starts dressing like a rhinestone cowboy, gets an expensive sports car, and takes up with a beautiful young woman. Middle Age Crazy is the first feature movie Marty Croft has produced. Dern and Croft didn't even know one another before they got together for the picture. He's got jeans and high boots. I went to New York and did a play called Strangers. It was about Sinclair Lewis. And it closed in uh, middle March of 1979. When I came home, Marty Croft was literally waiting at my house with this script. He showed me the script, but didn't said, don't read it. Let me play something for you. He went and he played me the Jerry Lee Lewis record, uh, the version of Middle Age Crazy, Sonny Throckmorton's song. And uh, I listened to it. And today he's 40 years old, going on 20. Don't look for the gray in his hair, cause he ain't got any. He's got a young thing beside him. Bruce Dern liked the song and the whole idea of being a leading man. Now he knows how Pat Boone felt when he got his first screen kiss. First time I've ever had a love scene in a movie was the beginning of this movie with Anne Margaret in the bed. The only other time I ever kissed a girl in a movie was in Gatsby with Karen Black, and then I broke her nose. <laughs> so after 20 years in movies, Bruce Dern gets to be a lover. But he can't have too many regrets about the past. Playing heavies and psychopaths put him with some of the best people in the business. And uh, no strings. Bruce, very quickly, I want to bring up some names from your past, and you just tell me what comes to mind. Betty Davis. Uh, the best. Truly? She, uh, the two most professional people I ever worked with in my life were Betty Davis and John Wayne. By that, I mean they were the first to the set, the hardest workers, the last to leave. I learned all my lessons in terms of professionalism from both of them, and they are without a doubt masters of what I would think a professional actor is. Uh, Betty Davis may be a little more of an artist, which is what I strive to be, than, say, John Wayne was, but he, uh, he was a professional actor. Betty Davis is a professional actress who also tries to be an artist. That's what I feel I try and do. But John Wayne is like, he was an institution, but he never was in love with the fact he was an institution. He was just the ultimate professional. You know? What comes to mind when you think of Alfred Hitchcock? You did Family Plot with him. Genius. Master. The only master, probably, that I've really ever worked with. I mean, he was, he was an extraordinary... Uh, he saw things through a lens and on the screen that... Uh, no one else has seen before or since. I mean, you know, uh, it's... He was a one-of-a-kinder. A one-of-a-kinder. One Tough on actors? No. Uh, that's all baloney. I mean, he and I happen to have a particularly good relationship, and maybe he was tough on some other actors, but I never saw it. Although he, uh, he uh, you know, used to be quoted as saying that uh, actors should be, uh, you know, uh, our cattle and so forth and so on. He never said they're cattle. He said they should be treated like cattle. He never said that they were cattle, you know. But he, no, he was, he was, he's, he was something. He, the, the best thing about Hitchcock is his setups were the toughest setups of anybody you'll ever work with, with the exception of the fact that within that setup you had more freedom than with any other director I've ever worked with, with the exception of maybe Hal Ashby. I mean, he was just incredibly, he just wanted to be entertained, Hitch. He wanted you to make, the frame was like this, and the shot was like this. He knew what the shot was supposed to say. Then he just wanted you to entertain him. And if you weren't entertaining, he shot it and tell you were. And if you wanted to do it again, this is where you could be tough on actors. If you wanted to do it again, like, for example, once Karen Black said, well, I didn't feel quite right. I'd like another one. He said, fine, Karen. Go ahead. So we went ahead, and uh, she did it again. And he said, thank you. And she says, oh, I feel much better. And he said, Hitch said, all right, now we'll move over here. And they started to move the camera, and she said, but wait, wait a second, Mr. Hitchcock, you, you never turned the switch on. He says, no, Karen, he said, I, uh, I got the shot I want in the first take. You said you wanted another one, so I gave you one. I didn't need to film it. <laughs> Wonderful. Bruce, I could sit here all day talking with you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Enjoyed meeting you. Okay.